How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about the racist history of the US medical system primarily instituted by the American Medical Association. Now before we get started with this video I do want to say that in 2008 the American Medical Association has apologized for their blatant and historic discrimination against black doctors and black people in general in medicine. However, I do want to I do want to highlight how I personally think that they aren't making enough changes in their system because of all this political power they have in the American medical system to change how black doctors are treated and how black doctors are enrolled in the US medical system. We'll go into that a little bit later, but before that I want to give you guys a brief history of racism in the US medical school system against black doctors. I am also going to be linking down below the uh, pivotal paper that was written in that addressed all these discrimination factors against black doctors and black medical schools down below because I think it needs more recognition. I think it needs to be spread. I know there's a couple of articles on the internet that have covered this research article before, but I just want to get word out there so more and more people share it. I think that article deserves more recognition than this video that I'm making. So in 1910, there's a report called the Flexner Report that was published, uh, sponsored by the Carnegie Foundation, but also covertly sponsored by the American Medical Association. Now this report kind of revamped the entire US medical school system, how it's run, um, certain requirements that must be met, and certain certain credentials that a medical school will have to meet in order for their students to become physicians. Now during that time in 1910, school medical schools were still very much desegregated. Black medical schools had fewer resources. And at the time, we only still had seven medical schools specifically for black doctors at the time. But when the Flexner Report was published and it changed the entire system of how medical schools are run in the US, five of those seven black medical schools were forced to shut down because of lack of resources, lack of credentialing requirements, and we know why that happened. It's pretty obvious why. Because the requirements they set in place did not take into account the fact that black medical schools were al already facing a lot of disadvantages compared to primarily white medical schools such as fewer resources, they didn't have as much funding, and specifically, I kid you not, specifically the only reason why black medical schools even existed was defined by the American Medical Association and I will give you guys a verbatim, a verbatim quote of what they said. The American Medical Association doubled down and recommended the co-education of women and men in US medical schools but accepted racial segregation in medical schools. They further went on to say that black physicians needed to exist so that they serve a limited mission, a limited mission, by being trained to humbly serve their people, their people, as sanitarians. So the only reason why the American Medical Association even supported the existence of black medical schools is the fact that they only supported the idea that black doctors should exist to take care of black patients and that's it. That will be their only role in American society. Now if that doesn't like wow you, I don't know what will. Lastly, of the two medical schools that survived this Flexner report, they were Howard Medical School and Mahari Medical College which luckily still exists to this day and around 85% of black doctors graduating from medical schools to this day graduate from historically black colleges. So there are over a hundred medical schools in the United States and only a handful of historically black medical schools. All of those historically black medical schools, 85% of black physicians come from them and they and those black physicians get so much, so much criticism from society, criticism from their peers, from other predominantly white medical schools for going to 
an HBCU. If we're going to a school with fewer resources or going to a school where the student doctors aren't trained enough or they're qualified enough, I too have been a victim of that for choosing to go to a historically black college. I've been told that the um, the same the same predominantly white school in the city that I am attending school in is better because they are somehow more superior even though the medical education system has been very standardized. Now I can go about addressing a lot more things that do uh, that come from medical racism in the US medical system and just medical care in general towards black people but that would be a very very long video almost to the length of a documentary and I already get critique uh, positive critique from my fiance that I need to make my video shorter so I'm going to only touch on the history right now but I do want to say that in 2008 the American Medical Association formally apologized for its past history of racial inequity toward African American physicians but the effects of the report on healthcare equity equity have still persisted and I really really want to highlight that the American Medical Association has made strides in advocating for black physicians however I do not think it's enough based on the amount of resources they have they have made a scholarship for black physicians for minority black physicians however this scholarship is only granted towards a handful of black medical students and they have made very little progress in advocating in in the US government. They have so much advocacy power in the US government to make sure that there are more clinical sites, there are more spots in medical schools, that there are more resources given to medical schools to support their black students, and they don't do that. In fact, actually, most of the programs that are in place right now to expose black medical students to specialties, not just primary care, because right now, most of the HBCU medical schools out there have, have to promote for black primary care because of their limited resources. So most of the programs in place right now that exposes black medical students to the specialties, to the more specialized specialties like dermatology, radiology, oncology, orthopedic surgery, is because other institutions are taking the weight of the AMA. The AMA, unfortunately, in my opinion, has not done enough for the repercussions that they have done to the black physician and black minority health population. They have not done enough. And I will say this again and again, AMA, you can send me all the emails that you, all the mail envelopes that you want asking me to join your association with my registration fee, I will still choose not to join because I want to see work done. I know you have the resources and I know that you guys are in a pickle right now and I know that you ha guys, ha I know that the American Medical Association has made strides, but I want to see more before I commit to an association that have had so much racist backing. And I can go on and on about other things that they have done, like refusing to give black physicians positions in the board of the AMA for years. I hope this video was useful to you guys. I hope this video had helped you understand the history of racism against black doctors in the U.S. medical school system. And I want to cover more videos about this. I think making a video like this was super important because not many people know the history behind it. So I wanted to make this video and I, I love you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I want to make more videos like advocating against medical racism, advocating for the health care of minorities, but also advocating for poor people regardless of race, gender, and any other status they might have. Please tune in, like, share, comment, and I'll see you guys on the next one. This has been.